Psalms 135. Praise ye the Lord. Again, it's all about the Lord. Any other praise is a sin. If it's not praising God, if it's not praising the Lord, if it's not praising Jesus Christ, it needs to be repented of. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Jehovah for the Old Testament. Jesus Christ, Jehovah saved. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, that's Psalms 134, in the courts of the house of, the, of, the, of God. That be the priests and the Levites. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And that's the theme of Psalm 134 that we've already done. There's no place to go into the tabernacle or the temple and have an attitude. And that is the whole theme of Malachi. The priests have that attitude. The priests are doing wrong. That's one of the themes of many themes in the book of Jeremiah. The, Jeremiah is a priest. The priests are doing wrong. You want to apply it to the Christian today. If you're doing something for God, you're going to church, you're serving the Lord, you're a servant. Don't do it with an attitude. God loves a cheerful giver. That's what Paul says. Praise the Lord. I, I, I hope you got the meaning. Hope you got what is expected. For the Lord is good. And people come up to me all the time. Oh, I'm good. There's only one good. The biblical definition of good is God. How are you going to match that? Well, we eliminate the Bible. We eliminate God. Then you got me that's good. Sing praises unto his name. All right? Go anywhere, turn that AM and FM and satellite, whatever you call the radio in the car, turn it on and go through go through five minutes, go 10 minutes, go 30 minutes at each radio station that you hit. And then mark down with a tally mark how many times the praise goes to sing praises unto his name, to God the Father. And then come back and tell me, go to, let's see, there's 50 states. Go to 25 states. Park your, park your vehicle in, in a metropolitan area of that state. Go to the radio station, 30 minutes each radio station. Record how many times you hear the name of the Lord being praised. And come to me and tell me, God bless America. Come on, tell me. And when you come across the radio dial, if it's contemporary music, if it's rock for Jesus, if it's rap for Jesus, that don't count. I'll go so far. If it's old-fashioned, old-time hymns, that counts. Anything else doesn't count. Boy, did I put the limitation on. Contemporary music, rock for Jesus, that don't count. That doesn't praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The record stopped, broken. You want to give it a nudge? That does not please God. What would you come up with, with singing praise to God on the radio in America? And you think God's going to bless this nation? We are at a farmer's market Saturday morning, at least at least one year, maybe two years. Time goes by quick. Maybe one, at least one year, maybe two years, there has been a radio there and a DJ hired to stop the preaching of the gospel. And when that when when one of the idiots come up and gets up and says, the "Angels don't want me in heaven," don't count that as glorifying God. 
don't glorify the, the song we heard this week and you know, people were rejoicing or thinking about that don't count that gives honor and praise and glory and and exalting God the Father that matches a King James 1611 Bible And don't give me up with, with Johnny Cash and Dolly Parton or any of those people. They sung a Christian hymn. Really? The way their lives live? Don't, don't, don't sell me on that. Praise you the Lord. Verse 4. For the Lord has chosen Jacob. Unto himself. That's why nations hate Israel. God says, see those group of people? Yes, they're mine. But we want their land. That's okay, because that land belongs to Israel. Imagine all the world of land. And this one big family of Abraham. Because they're all family. They're fighting over one little piece of land. You ever look at the map of the Middle East? And you ever just see this little sliver of Israel? And they're all fighting for that piece of land. Abraham had multiple children. He had, he had one child from Hagar. He had one child from Sarah. And he had multiple children from uh, uh, Petrua. But there's one child. There is one promised seed. That was Isaac. And Israel for his particular treasure. He didn't say America. He didn't say England where, where the sun never set upon the English Empire. He never said Japan. The sun rises upon Japan. He didn't say the mighty cold Russia. He don't say that the Black Lives Matter. He says Israel for his particular treasure. There's one people, one group of people, and there's one mass of, of people that God says are my people, and they're Israelite. It's not Americans. It's not Africans. It's not the English. For I know that God is great. It's not only good, he's great. We got a great good God. And you see these sports people are out there on their plane. I'm the greatest. I'm number one. And right now, in order to play, they got to wear a mask. Huh. God don't need a mask. God's the maker of Korah 19. And I'm the greatest, I'm the best. One day they're going to bury you in the ground. You're not, <clears throat> you're not going to bury God. One day all life will, will stand before God as the judge. God's not going to stand before God. That's the great. That one boxer, I'm the greatest, I'm the best. Here, I think he's dead. And if he's dead with the Muslim religion that he professed to believe in, he's dead in hell. He's a Bible believer today. In hell. If he continue with his Muslim religion. I hope he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ before he got saved. That our Lord is above all gods. Now the Bible says there are gods. When we get to Isaiah, God will say, oh, yeah, I'm looking around. Michael, check underneath that. He gave me one look over there. Holy Spirit, you want to check behind that tree? See if there's any gods up here. I don't know any other gods. We'll come to that with Isaiah. But there are gods. There are nouns that are gods. Person, places, and things. And whatever noun you worship more than God is a God, small g-o-d or s, and you'll fail. 
Do you give up your Sunday worship for something else? We're going camping. We're going. We're going to Ratland. I feel a sneeze coming. Whatsoever the Lord please. Now here's a bold statement. That did he in heaven and in earth and in the seas and all deep places. You know, the Bible says right here, whatever pleased the Lord, he did it. Isn't it great that we don't have a Roman or Greek God? Not studied Roman and Greek as I was, you know, I was in school. Roman gods and goddesses would come down and mate with the human being. As they did in Genesis eight where the sons of man came down and met with the daughters of man that's that's where greek and roman mythology got that out of this great god mated with this human being this great god is made maybe this human being then jealous but our god when it says he does his pleasure every single pleasure of god is holy and right god does not have pleasure in sin there's no unrighteous, God, you know, God, whatever the pleasure he was. One day he, he's making the creation, the Bible says here. He says, son, yes, father. They're going to believe in evolution one day, aren't they? Yep, Lord, we know it. You want to have some fun? Yeah, father, let's have some fun. Let's make a whale. He said, what's that pleasure? That whale is a fish in the middle of the ocean that's a mammal and gives birth, life, birth, and has milk for her young. Find another fish in the ocean that does that. All right. Well, that's a fun. Yeah, it was a fun, Father. We're doing a good job. Creation. Talk about the creation. All right. What do we got in the spare parts, man? Didn't we use that duck bill and a duck? We did, didn't we? We got an extra one? All right. It's going to lay eggs too. And it's a mammal. And it, it, it it's, it's a land. Man, Holy Spirit, that's a good one. Adam, what are you going to name that? We're going to name that the platypus. Good job, Adam. The pleasure of God making a whale and making a platypus to say they're going to believe in evolution. Okay, go ahead, explain that one. I'm waiting. And then God has thrown into his pleasure. We're going to make some frogs. We got a male and we got female. And there's some frogs that become a male and a female or, or female male to mate. Go ahead. Explain that one. Then God said, I'll have a worldwide flood. And everywhere in the world, these animals and humans and all that are going to die. And I'll just put their bones and their bodies to decay all over the planet. It'll mess them all. And then one of the ple pleasures of God is that Jesus Christ was beaten. And Jesus Christ was, was tortured for our sins. Isaiah 53. I believe even to the point he says even Jesus went to the cross. Something like pleasing, something like that. It pleased the Lord to go to Calvary. For man's sin. For the creation that God made, it pleased them to we're gonna have a we're gonna have an opportunity for them to believe on us, to be saved. You know what the devil takes pleasure of? Damning your soul to hell. He causes the vapors to send out the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasures. God, not the weatherman, controls the weather. The great and mighty, wonderful, good God that's worthy of praise, <coughs> worthy of sne sne sneezing, going to sneeze, worthy of singing. I've got that sneeze in me, it won't come out. Let me apologize now. Is able to control the weather and it happened yesterday. Oh, the hurricane I see is just coming. The hurricane I see is just coming. The hurricane I see is coming. Go to the story. Hurry up. Isaiah is coming. We're sitting here. Isaiah's. 
I watched Hurricane Isaiah. Oh, that's right. It was a tropical storm. Went out to the ocean. And he just blew the tree outside my bedroom. He didn't even give us any rain. So I go to the weather channels on Facebook. I'm typing all day long, having, a fun, having fun. And praising God. Say, Lord, thank you for protecting us. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both man and beast. We're going back to history. We're going back. History, you can't change history. And yet they changed the Bible. We're wonderful, great God that look what he did for Israel and Egypt. Oh, the death of the Egyptians. How cruel. The Egyptians were worshiping Pharaoh. The Egyptians were, were, were worshiping cow gods that wanted you to eat chicken and all other nonsense and the Nile God and the crocodile God and the Isis and, and all the, the fallen gods of verse 5. And God gave the Egyptians ample opportunity to do right. And they did wrong. At one point, God said to them, He said, listen, all you're going to listen to me, bring everything in the house. And the Bible records that there, was, there were some that did not listen to God. Who sent tokens and wonders in the midst of the old Egypt upon Pharaoh, upon his servants. Now, the, the writer's speaking to Israel, but he's speaking to the Egyptians like, hey, you had a chance. But look how great our Israel God, our Jehovah is. He beat the crap out of your God. Then people don't like crap, but that's what God did. You know, every single one of them plagues was a plague against the Egyptian God. The water turned to blood. That was the God of, uh, of the Nile River. There was a God of the flies. There was a God of the weather. There was a God of the cows. There was a God of Pharaoh. And the God of life. And God beat their butt. Who smote great nations for Israel. And slew mighty kings. Sihon, the king of Amorite. And Og. Now that's weird. Og is mentioned 22 times in the Bible. Og. This man that had the iron bedstead. 22 times. He's a defeated king. He's mentioned 22 times. And you can't even get the birth date of Jesus once. Kind of interesting. There's something about Og, and I don't know what it is, but God says 22 times in the Bible. Him and his iron bedstead. He was of the giants. Something about Og, man. There's something. I can't tell you what it is that I don't know. And all the kingdoms of Cana. That would be Joshua and Judges. And gave their land for a heritage. A heritage unto Israel, his people. And that's what the world hates. And they hate it today. And they hate Israel because God loves Israel. They hate Israel because he's the only nation that God said, here's a piece of land. This land is my land. This land is your land. But God didn't give it to you. So, na 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 God didn't give you America. And God's going to take America right from you, you wicked, vile hypocrites. We're a Christian nation. No, you're not. I don't see America in the Bay. I see Israel. I support Israel. I support missionary that goes to Israel. I pray for the Jews. I pray for them to get saved. I pray the seven years will hurry up, come and go. Hurry up, get the Antichrist, come and go. So Jesus can come for his for his people. Because Paul says pray for the peace in Israel. The only way that's going to get peace is when Jesus comes. Thy name, O Lord, endures forever. Jehovah, Jesus, the Lamb of God, uh, Revelation. Allah ain't going to last forever. Ever. Mary's going to get a new name. But 
Baloney, his name ain't going to lie. All the names of India, they're, they're going to go poopy. Can I say poopy? I can say poopy. All the gods in the family, gods of Japan, they're going to go poopy. All the gods of the world, verse 5, are going to go poopy into the lake of fire that burns forth. Those gods will profess that Jesus is the Lord. And thy memorial. You know what a memorial is in the Bible? The Bible says when, when you take of the flesh of Jesus and drink of the blood of Jesus, this is to remind you what Jesus done for it. And this is to remind you that Jesus is coming again. The Lord's Supper is a memorial. It's not salvation. It's to make you think. It's to give you a little time. It's a time before you partake. Say, Lord God, I'm sick. Lord, show me all the sin. It's not a time to sing stupid songs and do stupid things. It's a time for you to, oh, Lord God, show me my sins. God, I want to make sure. Because that's the thing the Lord says that, hey, listen, if you don't do it right, there could be death. There could be sickness. Serious. Throughout the, the life of Israel, you're to remember this. You're to remember this. You're to remember this. Each of their holidays was to remember God the Father, not patriotism, not stupid civil war and rebel. There was nothing to be memorized but God. Have a have a holiday for the dead. Have a holiday for Tammuz. Have a holiday for Istar. Have a holiday of our freedom. That everything you want to do, you got to pay money for a permit or a license. Man, you guys are so freedom. Really? How much did that tax cost you? Huh? We did battle against England for the coffee tax or tea tax. You know how many taxes we're paying now? We jumped the tea in the harbor. You don't realize what we have to dump in the harbor today if all the taxes were being taxed by the freedom of America? <laughs> Get your eyes on the Lord. Get your eyes on New Jerusalem. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes off sinful America. Go out there and witness to Americans. This is this world's not my home. Imagine how many Christians get up. This world is not my home. I'm just a past. America, America. The president is my hero. America. What did you just sing? This world is not my home. What does the Bible say? Israel. What one nation will for surely be in the eternal life in the new earth? Israel. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know what Hebrews says? It says, God said, Abraham, you're going to get a piece of land. Yes, Lord, I am. Abraham didn't get it yet. God a liar? No, he's not. Thy name, Lord, endures forever. Thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. You know how many generations it's been since Psalm 135? And there are still people praising God. You know how many of the gods have died out and the other day, they, they found this goddess statue. Whoopee! If she, if, if she was such a good goddess, she would have found herself out. For the Lord will judge his people, Israel. He will repent himself concerning his servants. He repented when when that angel of the Lord came destroying Jerusalem. He repented when Babylon came in. You got to the point, all right, that's enough. That's too harsh. And he spared them. Now what we're going to read, 15, 16, 17, 18, is found in Psalms 115, verses 4 through 8. It's recited. Why? Because our God's a great God. Because our God's a good God. Our God's above the God. And the psalmist is exalting God, Israel. Exalt God. Israel has these, these fallen gods. Israel has sinned. 
And the sound is like, get rid of that crap. The Catholic Church is filled with crap. We drive by and away to and home from church. And there's a place that has all these, these statuettes and, and bird feeders and all the crap. The idols of the heathen. There's not supposed to be the idols of Israel. And yet they are. The same idol in Genesis, I mean Jeremiah chapter 10, 10 the, the, the Christmas tree. The, the idols of the heathen are silver and gold. The works of man's hand, made by man, made in Indonesia, made in Taiwan, made in America, made in China, made in the Philippines, made in Manila, made in Hong Kong. That's not God. Our God's the one that made you, Genesis 1 and 2. And when you fabricate something with your hands and becomes a God, they have mouths, but they speak not. Billions or billions of Catholics pray to Mary's statue. And Mary not once has said one word to her. Think about that. Hell, Mary, full grace. Yes. She don't say yes. She don't say nothing. What about the big fat Buddha statue with the belly button sticking up? Oh, Buddha. Hello? Buddha? Buddha, Buddha, Buddha? Give me another cheeseburger. Eyes have they, but they see not. Hello, God. Hello, here. You see. They don't see. Look at them. I grew up in a Catholic church. They have eyes. They have mouths. They don't. They can't see and they can't talk. What about your sports mascot? What about your figurines? What about your, your stuffed animals? What about the, the, the Tonys and the Oscars? It's the same thing. We give you to the best picture of all and give you a, 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 a human statue. You did such a good job, though. I don't say nothing. If your God can't talk, your God can't see. It ain't no God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you folks, God, that's a God. When they make an image to the beast and it talks. Now that's a God, small G-O-D. There are two gods, two gods of this world, God the Father and God the Devil. And all the ones that man makes, that's God or the Devil. I'm not talking about, you know, when you go to, to the rat land or you go to amusement park, and this mannequin gets up there and says, four, four, seven years ago. That's all mechanics. It's not life. It's animation. It ain't real. Pull the plug out, undo the battery. It ain't going to say nothing. They have ears, but they hear not. I got a prayer. Help me. I got a prayer. I'm in trouble. Oh, God, hear me. They can't hear. My God is great and wonderful and wonderful and great. He can hear all his people throughout the whole world. And he can hear an unsaved man praying and, and, and monitor what that man is doing named Cornelius. Does God listen to the prayers of unsaved people? What do you do with Cornelius? The angel can say, the Lord's heard your prayer. He's like, no, it's your own. Try that with Mary. Try that with the statue of the Pope. Try that with Pan. Try that with your little cardinal. Your little blueberry or bluebirds. Try that with your turtle. I mean, down here, turtles and, and alligators and all the other mess and manatees. And those statues and all that, they can't do. Save the whales. They're not going to thank you. Neither is there any breath in their mouth. They're dead. Genesis 2, 7. God, God breathed life into Adam and he became a living soul. 
There's no breath coming out of those statues. Put a mirror up to them. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna fog. They that make them are like unto them, dead, lifeless. So is everyone that trusts in them. Go up to your Catholic friends and say, you're dead and you're lifeless. <gasps> That's what the Bible says. You're involved in idolatry, you're dead and lifeless. Jesus said that. The Holy Spirit said that. God said it. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus is God. In this phrase, the Holy Spirit told the psalmist, write that down. Verse 19. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. That's nation. That's the entire nation. Bless the Lord. Make the Lord happy. We read that the other night. We looked at the when, when uh, Leah called her son Asher. She named her son Asher. She said, the, the daughters of Israel shall be blessed. Happy. They named them Asher, which means happy. Israel is a nation. Bless the Lord. Make them happy. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. That's the priest. The nation of Israel. Praise the Lord. The priest. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Not all Levites are priests. All priests are Levites. All, Levi, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. So here's the, the family that are not the priests. They work right aside, right aside of the priest. The high priest and the priest, bless the Lord. Those that do service to the priest of God, praise the Lord. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Oh, I fear God. Make him happy. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. It's the capital city. Praise ye the Lord. That's everyone else. You go from the nation, from the high priest, the priest, the family of the, of, of the Levites. You go to the capital city and you go to everybody of Israel and say, Israelites, What's God want from you? They want you to bless the Lord. And that same Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ that came and you, you caused him to be crucified. You can do whatever you do today if you're not blessing the Lord, you're not pleasing the Lord by rejecting God, Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. 